All right, let's look at curve length. We also call it arc length. What we want to do is take this curve and break it up into tiny line segments where those line segments are awfully close to the actual curve itself. So let's, let's zoom in on this. So if this is what we have, we have that line segment in pink, that straight line, and the blue line is the curve that it's trying to approximate. If I'm trying to find the length of that, well, it looks like a hypotenuse of a triangle, I'm going to be able to use Pythagorean theorem with my delta x and the delta y. And basically, the length of that segment is simply delta x squared plus delta y squared and the square root of that. Now what I could do is pull out a delta x squared. Why I'd want to do that? Well, because I know where this is going. If I did that, I could rewrite the square root of delta x squared as delta x, and I'm left behind with this. Well, if I remember change in y over change in x, that's the rate of change, that's just the derivative of the function. So it's going to be the derivative of the function squared. So I'm going to get a little mathy here. Really what I'm doing to find the whole length of that curve is I'm taking the limit as n goes to infinity, breaking that total curve up into n pieces, going from one to n, and I'm summing up all these little delta x pieces well, delta x times the square root of 1 plus f prime of xi all squared, where xi is the particular piece we're looking at. If I take that limit, then I find out that the arc length is equal to the integral, the definite integral, between a and b of the square root of 1 plus f prime of x squared dx. Let's look at an example. All right, let's look at the function f of x equals 2x to the 3 halves power, and I want to find the length of this curve from 0 to 1. So here's my general formula. I know that I've got f of x. So the first thing I do before I plug anything in is find out what f prime of x is, because that is what I'm going to be plugging into this formula. I'm actually never going to use f of x directly. So I have this simplifies to this. Now what do I do? Oh yes, it's the u substitution. u is going to be equal to 1 plus 9x. Then I'll find du equals to 9dx. Of course, I don't have 9dx. I only have dx by itself. So I'll solve for dx, and I get that dx is equal to du over 9. So I'll substitute that into my equation. So I end up with 1 ninth, the integral from 0 plugged into u to 1 plugged into u, the square root of u du. I tend to rewrite square root of u as u to the 1 half, otherwise I make mistakes when I'm trying to integrate. And if I go ahead and plug 0 and 1 into my u, I find that the lower limit would be 1 plus 9 times 0, and the upper limit 1 plus 9 times 1. So I have this. Okay. That's a pretty straightforward integration. And I have this. I could simplify a little bit more. I could rewrite 10 to the 3 halves power as 10 times square root of 10. I don't know if that's any simpler, but I could rewrite it like that. The point is, these kinds of problems are usually ugly, and they're very fake. Why are they fake? Because at this point in Calc 2, we only know generally how to use u substitution as our only trick to integration. So we're pretty limited in what we can integrate. So we are picking functions that purposely fall into this category. And that's why it's not a very favorite topic of mine, only because when we're taught this this early, we're really limited to particular kinds of functions. I could also do a arc length if I wanted to integrate with respect to y. And this new equation hopefully doesn't shock you at this point, because we've done quite a bit of swapping back and forth between dx and dy.